Welcome back. In this business finance lecture, we'll go over study problem 9-2 in page 298 from the 8th edition of our textbook. Here's a view of the problem. The problem is a rather long problem and, the, and basically consists of multiple parts. And at the end of the day, we need to figure out the cost of capital for each different type of financing methods. Uh, in part A, we are told that we would like to finance our operations by issuing bonds. Part B is a new common stock issue. Part C is funds are raised through internal common equity. In part 4, we are raising funds by issuing preferred stock. And part E uh, is another bond issue. So what I will do, I will split the problem into pieces. Naturally, we have five parts of the problem. So let's have a look at each individual part. Uh, one at a time. So that's the first part of this problem. As we said earlier, we are issuing a bond to finance our operations and the bond is assumed to have a $1,000 par value and it pays a coupon interest of 11%. Well, the flotation costs associated with issuing the bond is assumed to be 5% and the market value of the bond is $1,125. The bond will mature in 10 years, the average and the marginal tax rates are provided as well. Cost of bond, huh? so that's what it is about, cost of bond. Uh, the solution can be split into three parts. In the first part, the net price that the firm will receive uh, after all the commissions to investment bankers are paid. And the formula for that was the price paid by investors times one minus the flotation cost as a rate. So in this particular case, uh, each bond is uh, selling currently in the marketplace at $1,125. How, uh, that's how much the investors pay. However, we need to make sure to pay 5% to the investment bank. Only the remaining amount will be available to the firm and this would give us the net price of $1,068.75 and that completes the first part. Now for the second part now um, we need to calculate the before tax cost of capital before tax cost of in this case the bond and for that we will make use of our financial calculator the usual third row um, of our financial calculator so we are given that this is a 10-year bond where uh, what we are interested in figuring is i over y uh, currently the bond net price is one thousand sixty eight dollars and seventy five cents the coupon rate is eleven percent the coupons are paid annually so therefore eleven percent of one thousand dollar will give us eleven uh, one hundred ten dollars and the face value is given as one thousand simply computing i over y will yield an answer of nine point eighty nine percent before tax cost of the bond now finally we can use the formula for after tax cost of the bond um, which was the before tax cost of the bond times one minus the tax rate. Now we need to pay particular attention to which tax rate to take because we are provided with both marginal tax rate and the average tax rate. For the calculation's sake we will be using marginal tax rate. Okay so having said that note as well all we need to now do is to plug in the numbers uh, so before tax cost of capital was previously calculated as 9.89%. Um, the tax rates, the marginal tax rate is 34%. And multiplying these two, you should be able to obtain 6.53%. So that's the cost of issuing bonds for the corporation now let's make a side note here that usually bond issuing bonds is the cheapest way to finance operations for the firm 
However, there is a limit for that. Usually, uh, the firm cannot keep issuing bonds, basically borrowing money from the investors indefinitely. Rather, um, the, the, the debt ratio usually set the limit on how many bonds can be issued. Uh, that completes the first part. Now, for the second part of the problem, part B, this time the firm is issuing common stock. Uh, this part, uh, whenever, the, the, so when we try to calculate the cost of common stock, a new issue particularly, that would consist of making two calculations. The first calculation is figuring uh, the net price. Uh, and again, the net price based on the givens in the problem would be just the market price times one minus the flotation cost. So we are told price is $27.50. However, 5% flotation costs are anticipated. So therefore, the uh, price of $27.50 can be plugged in. Then we multiply it by 1 minus 0.5. So making the calculation, we realize it would come out as $26.13. So that's the net price. Now in the second step, uh, we can plug in these values to, call it, to calculate cost of common stock, common equity. And that would, uh, we would simply use again the, um, the same formula we do for calculating the rate of return for an investment, for a common stock investment. However, um, the denominator should represent this time the net price rather than um, just the price. So uh, D0, uh, the dividends paid were $1.80, so that's D0. And then the growth rate is given as 7% per year. So that would give us the 7%. We can now divide things by the net price. In this case, it's $26.13. And then we add finally the growth rate as well. So making these calculations uh, will yield 14.37% of cost of common equity. Next part. Uh, this time we are calculating the cost of issuing internal common equity internal meaning we do not need an investment banker to underwrite uh, the issuing of the stocks so that would be significantly cheaper for the firm so currently the market price is 43 dollars and dividends in the following year are expected to be three dollar and fifty cents and afterwards increasing at a seven percent rate meaning that would be the growth rate so pretty much just plugging in the values as if we are calculating uh, the expected rate of return. We realize that the cost of internal common stock is equal to D1 divided by price. Notice that I do not have to worry about flotation costs again, plus the growth rate. We are told that dividends are expected to be $3.50 in the following year. Currently, the market price for the stock is $43, and the growth rate of uh, dividends are expected at 7%. So, making the necessary steps of calculation, we come across the value of 15.14%. So, for the next part, D, this time we are issuing preferred stock. Uh, which has a 9% dividend on a $150 par value and uh, the flotation costs are 12% and the current market price is also given. So uh, first, in the first step, let's figure out the net price again. So net price would be simply the price uh, times 1 minus the flotation costs. So that would give us $154. And then in the second part, now we can plug in these values uh, to calculate the cost of the preferred stock, which would be equal to the dividends. Because it is a preferred stock, we don't have to worry about last year dividend versus this year dividend divided by net price. Now, dividends are in terms of if certain face value so dividend payments are nine percent of the par value of 150 dollars 
everything divided by the net price of $154, uh, making the necessary calculations, we realize the cost of preferred stock is 8.77%. So in the last part of the problem, again, we are calculating the cost of bonds. Um, it is provided that the before tax uh, cost of the bond is 12% after flotation costs have been taken into consideration. All we now need to do is we can confidently skip the first two steps involved in the calculation of the cost of the bond. And so therefore the cost of bond is equal to before tax cost of bond times 1 minus the tax rate. Again, this is after tax cost of the bond. So before tax cost of the bond is provided as 12% and the tax rate is 34%. Multiplying these two figures result of 7.92% after tax cost of debt. So that pretty much uh, completes our solution. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, long problem and hope to see you again in our following video.